All right, so we got this uh, little antenna right here that uh, pulled out of its case. And my problem was that this um, this guy here was not the cable that I wanted. So I cut off the um, this crap right there, and then I'm going to snip all these guys off and desolder this, and then I will put on a new cable that I want, uh, Elmar, 4, or no, Elmar 195 this stuff right here and make it so that the this antenna goes directly into the thing that i want it to go into this is not a helium project this is for something different this is for a um a weather station and it's on 3g and we're just trying to extend the, the life of that thing as long as we can and to do that we need this antenna to pick up the signals that are coming from a tower that is now further away than when 3g was um all over the place so that's what's going on that's what i'm doing all right, so the next step is we are gonna come in and get this guy here desoldered using my little station. I'm gonna bring in my uh, magnifying glass so we can see what's going on, get a good idea of what I need to do and uh, get her done, we'll get that cable off. Next step is taking some heat shrink and getting it over this guy so that we can thread our LMR 195 through there and have that thing set up. And I don't care for right now if that um, heat shrink is right where I want it, but uh, for right now that's that's gonna be good enough. And we are now going to actually take that sucker through a little bit more so I got something to work with. And I am going to prep the end of, of this guy. That will go this way. Just get the first step done here. You guys are all familiar with this from working on your LMR 400. Yep, there we go. Looks pretty good. They say I always knock that little plug out. And then the other side, this goes in here. We'll strip off that outer jacket. Get it in there until it's out. Now it looks pretty good. We'll take our deburring tool and then just get that on there, deburr that sucker, and then see what uh, what we can get done here. We are pretty close to getting everything back on and doing some uh, some soldering work that is probably beyond my uh, skill set, but I'm going to try it anyway. All right, here we go. Okay, while it is not as beautiful as it was, it's uh, looking okay. Is that sucker's on there? And uh, we got, I think, I'd say it's better with the... Yeah, the magnifying glass, isn't it? I think we got what we need. Let's uh, let's test it. Okay, so we got the antenna uh, mounted in my little vise here. The repairs have been made. I've got it plugged into my analyzer, and we're seeing that down at the bottom of the range here, we're at a visoire of 1.4. I bet if I move away, I can get that to change a little bit. Um, whoop, look, and looks like it's not quite tight enough. There we go. So 1.4 down to the bottom range, which is 690 on this antenna. It goes up to, I think, 2600. So middle of the range is 1700. And Visoire in the middle of the range is great, 1.03. Um, that tells me that I probably did a good job repairing that thing and making all the connections. So very pleased with that. And then up at the top of the range is where it really starts to... So I think 2,700 is the top of it, might be 2,600. Um, this is a wideband antenna, so it's all over the place, or it covers a wideband frequency. And this war up there is 2.0, not exactly what we want, but um, still not not garbage terrible, just not optimal. So pretty, pretty darn cool. Um, now let's talk about why we're using this antenna is this is not for a helium deployment. This is for a weather station. And this weather station is connected to a router, just like a, a helium um, hotspot would be, which is why this is hopefully useful for you. And in this case, the uh, the router and the, the system that it's on is uh, the old 3G system. Now, 3G is being shut down in the US, so we're kind of running out the clock here. And what we noticed is as the 3G towers around us started to get shut down, the signal got weaker and weaker. And so we figured we could buy a little bit more time, buy a $120 antenna, make this quick little improvement to the um, cable, and then mount it and make, have an antenna on there that was a little bit more sensitive so it could pick up the signals and feed them to the cell router and make sure that we stayed online for as long as we could. Now, eventually, I'm going to try and switch the weather station over to a helium station, but for right now, it's running on um, on this cell backhaul. Now, how is this or why is this important for you? You may be running a helium hotspot off-grid. 
And if you're running it off grid and your router um, is not getting signal, you're, you're using kind of the standard uh, antennas that come with any of these any of these routers, um, you can think about upgrading your router antenna and that will give you a little bit stronger signal. It'll be more sensitive to the signals that are out there and hopefully give you a better connection so that your helium hotspot can stay online and be rocking and rolling. So that's the deal. This is a pretty simple, easy little project. You can do it totally at home. Um, you don't need a bunch of fancy equipment. You don't need all this crap that I've got. You can just do this with a soldering iron and, uh, and pretty much that's it. So Rock on, best luck with your helium deployments and your off-grid stuff, and I will catch you on the Discord. Rock on.